You've recently thrown money into this service called iRacing and you want to start winning your first rookie races. But you're having a problem. You're not winning. Well, let me help you. Just quickly, I'll be giving away details on a giveaway at the very end of this video, so make sure you stick around. There's probably a lot of places to improve in iRacing when you're a rookie, but there are a couple of factors that play a big role in getting your first win. I'll first be talking about your mindset, and then after that, I'll go a bit over the car's behavior and your driving style. And then I'll end off with a little bonus tip to get you going. The mind is where everything happens in racing, and therefore it's important that you're not thinking in a weird or toxic way. The clearer the mind is, the more coping power you'll have. Now there are a couple of ways that I use to clear my mind when I'm driving and the first one is getting some fresh air. 20% of the oxygen we breathe is used for our brain to function so therefore it's important that you get some fresh air. Oh no. Oh no, I just stepped in some shit. But if we stay indoors on an air-conditioned environment for longer periods of time, the same air will be breathed in again and again and it will become stale. So, get some fresh air. The second tip I want to give about mindset is, it is what it is. It's very simple, but if you think about it, it's very important to think in this way. Let's say you've been taken out. Your car doesn't have any damage, but you've lost precious time. At this point, you have two choices, which is one, be annoyed for the rest of the race and complain about it or to say it is what it is. I know which one I choose and it's not number one. The reason being if you're driving while you're annoyed at something you use your brain power or brain capacity or being annoyed at that instead of focusing on your driving. You can always be angry afterwards you know that's not the point you can be as angry as you want afterwards. It's just important that when you're hit with a bit of unluck you focus forward and see how much time you can make back. Next up I want to talk a bit about the car behavior of the MX-5 and the Formula V. Let's start with the MX-5. The MX-5 is in my opinion a great car to start out with. It's quite easy to keep on track and it doesn't have that much power so you don't have to manage the throttle inputs. The MX-5 also has a good balance so it's not that easy to drop the rear and spin into a wall or something. Overall it's a pretty easy car to drive. If you don't think so, Here's what I would recommend. The first thing I do is trying to brake a little bit earlier, taking it a bit more easy on the braking, because if you're losing the rear end in the MX-5, it's most likely because you're carrying too much speed into the corner. But now to the all important question, where do you find the time in this car? With every car there's a life hack, a little sentence that you just need to get into your brain and you'll find time on that. With MX-5 you need to brake as late as you can but not so late that you don't get a great exit. Exit in this car means the world because it doesn't have that much power and if you don't get early in front, it feels like the power will just come around sometime in the next century. If I was a rookie and had to start all over again, I would definitely choose the MX-5 over the Formula V and here's why. You really can't make an epic montage with this car, can you? The Formula V is a bit harder to drive than the MX-5, mainly because it's harder to control off-throttle. This means that you'll have to be more careful on the downshifts and the turns than the MX-5. The main life hack for the Formula V is to downshift late. Therefore, you don't offset the rear differential by going into too high revs, and that should make it a bit easier to control. Or in other words, downshift late because it'll keep the car more balanced. If you think you're downshifting late and you're still losing the rear of the car, try downshifting even later or braking a bit earlier. It might be because you're having too much speed in this car. And if you have too much speed in the Formula V, you go around. This car is really all about trying your way forwards, but it's important that you do it in practice and not in the race. Because when you make a mistake in the Formula V, the chances of you spinning around into a wall and into the atmosphere are high. At the end, I want to give you a bonus tip which will help you all the way through your sim racing career. This is one that even I have to get into my brain sometimes because I, I, I fail to remember it. Never underestimate practice. This is the singular most important tip that I can give to any rookie. The more laps you've experimented with braking zones, the more laps you've experimented with racing lines, the more confidence you will have in yourself. So, never underestimate practice. Now for the giveaway. I'll be giving away 10 iRacing dollars to two of you lucky winners out there and I don't have that many viewers yet so there's a pretty good chance of you winning this. All you have to do is like this video, subscribe to the channel and put a comment in the comment section saying your iRacing name and your favorite food to have for dinner. And I'll choose a winner in the next video. Yeah, I'm yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. Hey, come in there. Yeah. Flex. I just want to win. Yeah. Whoa.